so does Ben want another animal? Yeah. So now it's going to be what, whether we get a dog or a cat. Yeah. 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 Okay, is everybody ready? This is the dog. Me too. I talked to her today. Good evening. I'll call this uh, special meeting of the Federal Way City Council to order for January 3rd, 2017. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us for this special meeting. Uh, First, we'll have the, uh, the study session. We'll be uh, a briefing on Transportation Benefit District, TBD. We'll have a staff report uh, by Desiree Winkler, our uh, uh, Public Works Deputy Director. Then we'll have citizen comment, uh, if there is any, the council discussion. And then we will uh, recess for executive session. And I'll explain that when we get there. Desiree. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of the council. Happy to provide you a briefing of the Transportation Benefit District what it is, what we can do with it, and the timeline for implementation. So a transportation benefit district, or a TBD, is a quasi-municipal corporation, an independent tax taxing district, that can raise revenue for transportation pro projects. And that's usually through uh, vehicle license fees or sales tax. The TBD revenue can be used for transportation improvements that are included in local, regional, and state plans. Improvements can range from transit service, sidewalks, roadways, transportation demand management. It can be for construction, operations, and maintenance costs can be covered by this. TBDs have been in place for a while. Over 90 cities and towns have formed TBDs. And a majority of them implement the vehicle tab fee, most of them at the $20 level. There have been several cities and towns that have implemented sales tax that actually is implemented via a majority vote. Um, so to form a TBD, um, any city or county or town can form a TBD by ordinance followed by a public hearing following a public hearing, sorry, public hearing first, then the ordinance. <laughs> um, and it just has to find that, that it is in the public interest to do so. When you establish it, the ordinance must specify the boundaries, which may include the entire jurisdiction. It can be smaller. I actually don't know of anybody who's done that. Um, you have to specify the transportation improvements that are planned to be funded. You have to say in the ordinance how it's going to be governed and staffed, generally by the, the um, city council. Um, the TBD must issue an annual report. Um, it must develop a material change policy of a 20% threshold. It must go through notice and public hearing and an ordinance process if the TBD functions are expanded beyond the original establishment and it has to have a sunset provision. Um, something new, um, I think as of uh, June of 2015, is that TBDs can be assumed, um, and that's as long as the boundaries are the same as the city or county. And um, as of June of this past year, uh, 45 of the TBDs uh, have been assumed by their cities and towns, and we expect that probably a majority of them will do so. So funding sources that are available, I'll focus mostly on the vehicle license fees because I, that's what's in the proposed budget. And a TBD um, can impose a vehicle license fee up to $50 without a public vote. But there's some conditions. So at $15 as proposed in the budget, there are no conditions. And up to $20 also, there are no conditions. If you want to go above the $20, you can go up to 40, but the $20 fee had to be in effect for 24 months. You can also go up to $50, but only if the $40 fee has been in effect for at least 24 months. 
And again, if you go over um, 50 and up to 100, uh, that must be approved uh, by a simple majority of the voters. Um, in Federal Way's example, projected revenue for two different scenarios, the $15, the net projected revenue would be around $879,000. The fees that are taken off are by the Department of Licensing. That's for them to administer collecting the fees as part of the tab. Um, at the $20 level, the net projected revenue would be a little over $1.1 million. And note that in 2017, which we'll talk a little bit more about, that we don't see the revenue being um, any more than 30 to 40 percent of the net projected revenue because it's going to take some time in order to implement uh, the collection of fees. So some other funding sources, uh, just so that you're aware of them, and some of these are funding sources that are already available to us as a city, um, but they basically duplicate them within the Transportation Benefit District uh, laws. So, um, but sales and use taxes, some people have, um, some jurisdictions have used use that, and a lot of times it's jurisdictions that have a lot of outside visitors. For example, say uh, Leavenworth or a Squim, um, they've implemented, I believe, sales and use taxes. Um, a TBD can issue general obligation bonds um, or get general obligation bonds. Um, border area fuel tax wouldn't really apply to us. <laughs> um, impact fees, again, which are similar to what we can do as a city anyway. Vehicle tolls uh, implement excess property taxes and have um, local improvement districts. So this is more of a graphical representation of the timeline for the formation and implementation of uh, the TBD, uh, basically starting now in January. Uh, a lot of things happen, which I'll go through in the next slides, and we won't see the first revenue collected till about September of this year, if we move ahead. So today, here we are at the council <laughs> study session uh, we need to publish a notice if we intend to um, move as quickly as possible and have a public hearing and establish an ordinance at uh, the next council meeting on January 17th. Um, again, again, that would be public hearing and first reading of a TBD formation ordinance. February 7th would be the second reading of the formation ordinance and then followed by the number of days required for it to actually be enacted which is March 9th on my next slide. Um, so in order to, um, if we wanna move forward to assume the TBD, so the city assume the functions of the TBD, then um, you have to publish a resolution that you assume to do that um, two weeks in a row, which would be, could be March 10th and March 17th. On March 21st, we could hold a public hearing regarding the resolution of intention to assume the TBD and hold the first um, reading of the ordinance for the assumption. Um, at the same time, since that's the next meeting after the effective day of the TBD ordinance, the TBD can meet as its entity and actually establish fees on that date as well. So the, um, so not, it, it's a little bit confusing. You are all the same people. <laughs> But acting with your TBD, um, you know, body on, then you can make those actions until uh, you've actually assumed it, which would be again after uh, March 21st, second reading, an enactment of when the city is actually assumed the TBD. Um, so then a lot of things happen then I, as we form. Right, Sorry, I, Councilmember Hunt has a quick question. Oh, okay. Um, do the other cities that have TBDs have just the council members as a governance team, or do they have citizens on that team also? My understanding is that it is uh, generally what I've heard. It's been the city council. Okay, thank you. Um, and so once we've established um, the initial TBD, there's going to be some time between March and May where we're working with Department of Licensing, licensing to get the interagency agreement together so that they can actually do the billings on the, on the vehicle tab fees. Um, 
and September again would be when we anticipate to see the first fee collection. And in my experience, I did form a TBD while I was for the, working for the city of Lakewood, and that was th the timeline that it took. And, and literally, your first check from Department of Licensing was like $120 because that was you know, the first you know, vehicle registrations that came in. So it does take some time to get the revenue rolling. But we propose in this schedule is about that's the fastest in terms of logistics that we can make it happen. And I'm happy to answer any other questions. And if I can't, Mark is. <laughs> Councilmember Moore and then Councilmember Honda. You, you talk oh, about Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you talk about it's the fastest in terms of logistics. And then I know you just mentioned that you have experience from working with the city of Lakewood um, and saying that that's the right uh, timeline here. Uh, but that leads me to believe that there are other other cities use other timelines. I mean, how does this compare to other jurisdictions? As far as I know, we also have, and I believe the answer for um, Council Member Honda's question was sent out um, regarding when the Department of Licensing is kind of required to implement this, and they give themselves a six month timeline to implement it. So if they're using a different funding mechanism, possibly they might have, you know, faster, but using the vehicle license tab fee per RCW, they have six months to implement it. Councilmember Honda, then Deputy Mayor Burbage, then Councilmember Asafa Dawson. Do you know um, a list of the cities in South King County that have this? Do you have that readily available? I don't have that readily available. I've been looking at quite a few of them, but I wouldn't have a comprehensive list. That's I've been getting them from uh, MRSC. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Burbridge. Thank you. Uh, related to that time period, I saw that response that there's a six-month uh, required period before, after the vote, and I just was wondering about a clarification for which vote that was being referred to. So it, it's six months after the fee is introduced. So once you've pat once the TBD or the council, after it's assumed mm -hmm. the TBD itself, passes the resolution saying we're setting X fee, okay. then it's six months from that date. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Council Dawson. Yeah, so there's a sunset provision on this? There is, and that is a requirement to have in there. And so the the list of projects currently proposed is very broad. It's basically um, what is in the current uh, six-year TIP and every TIP that's revised annually. Um, so it basically gets exhausted once every project within all the TIPs in the future are funded and completed along with we did add the provision of the asphalt overlay um, program being able to be funded by this. So um, it's just something automatic that you have to have in there. So do we <clears throat> put a year timeline on it or do we use, do we look at all the projects that, are, that we have existing and go based on that or how does it work? Um, <clears throat> as far as how it's proposed now and we're still polishing up the draft and we are waiting, waiting to be able to discuss with you and, and see what your preferences would be. Um, right now, it's, it's pretty broad and pretty open, and there are many TBDs that are like that. Um, when I was in Lakewood and we formed the TBD, there actually was a very specific list of projects that were being funded and a very specific timeline. It was six years and all those projects were to be completed um, on that list, and that was it within the six years, and that it would sunset automatically. Now, more than likely, they will amend it and pass you know, another resolution to have a different list of projects, but that was the intention um, of that TBD. So, so if, when the six years are up, let's say, and you want to extend it further and have a, a new ordinance, then you can increase the amount if you want because it's already been the, the 24 years have, 24 months have already passed by then, right? 
uh, yeah, if you if a twenty dollar right fee was implemented, that okay. would be one way to do that. Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Mahanda. Thank you. So according to this timeline, if on March 21st, we have a public hearing and we pass the ordinance or the resolution, then it's six months from that date that we can start collecting? Um, correct. And it's the, it's the bottom part that's most important of that sentence is the passing the resolution to set the fees. That's what kicks the six months. And that's on March, that could be March 21st? Yes, that is what's proposed. Okay, thank you. All right, Council, any other questions? All right, do, uh, do you have anything else to add? I do not. Great job, thank you very much. Thanks. Very much appreciated. Mayor okay. Farrell, if I may jump in yes. for just one second to clarify something that Council Member Honda brought up. Um, on that March 21st date, the TBD would have to hold a separate meeting as a study session, or essentially uh, before the City Council's regular meeting, sitting as its own body to pass that resolution, because if it's not, that action is not taken by the TBD itself at a separate meeting, then it would have to wait until the assumption resolution had gone or ordinance had gone into effect, which would be a little bit further down the road. Okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, Councilman Miranda. Thank you. So the TBD, as the council, we're the TBD governing body. So we vote on the resolution, but not at a council meeting, at a separate meeting. That's correct. You're acting in your ex officio capacity. So you, by virtue of being a council member, you were on the board, the governing board for the TBD. And the way this was before 2015 is they were two separate entities and there was no assumption. And uh, the legislature tried to make a fix because they realized it was more efficient for a city council to be able to assume the TBD when it was the exact same body with the exact same jurisdiction. And rather than having two separate meetings for the same, uh, two separate meetings with the same body for the same purpose. But it, it sounds like it is two separate meetings. Uh, if, only if you don't, it'll, in order to move this forward as quickly as possible, it would have to be two meetings until such time the council decides to assume the TBD. And when could we make that decision? At the March 21st meeting is the earliest you could assume. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. It's a little confusing. I, I've got, uh, I think, a day where well, I would like to add something, a day? Yes, I think I just want to clarify regarding the six months. Department of Licensing sent out the renewal notice about 120 days before the license expires. So in addition to that 120 days, they need a few months to be able to pull the data to be able to identify the vehicles that belong within the district. That is where the six months come in. So from the point that the city or the, uh, the TBD notify Department of Licensing, it takes between four and six months because they send out their renewal notice 120 days before the expiration date. And, and we, uh, we calculated all this when we were doing the budget. These, uh, we had the, un the understanding it would take a while for this to kick in. Yes, that is part of why we proposed that we would be able to hire the four officers towards the end of the year because as uh, Desiree pointed out, we're expecting between 40% of what the annual revenue will be. Yes. Okay, great. All right, Council, any other questions? All right, uh, thank you very much. Is there anybody uh, out in the uh, uh, public comment, any, any member of the uh, community? Diana, uh, Diana Noble Gulliford. My name is Diana Noble Gulliford. Um, I, have, I have a question and that is in, uh, in your presentation here, you talked about impact fees and I was wondering what the city uh, presently collects for impact fees for new development at this time? Okay. A day? That, that would be the transportation por portion I'm oh, asking I'm about. Oh, I see. The transportation portion. Uh, 
Ade, could you turn up your microphone, please? No. This is, uh, the TBD is totally different from the impact fee. I understand. Yeah. But, but that, you, does the city currently collect transportation impact fees from new development? Yes. Yes, we do. So, uh, yeah, Marwan, would this be a question? Mar Marwan actually has a lot of experience in regard to this, in regard to, or even Brian uh, would be a you know, gentleman. Yes, at the present time, the city does collect transportation impact fee for new development. There's an analysis done for every new development that come to the city as to the number of trip they generate, and based on the number of trip they generate, the impact fee get established. Okay. So, it's, so it sounds like there's a formula that based on, on trips. For, for a new development. So uh, th thank you, Marwan. So with this, um, um, as a planning commissioner, um, which is where I, I uh, gather most of my expertise on, on this, is that in the beginning, when we became, <laughs> when we became a city, but also when the Growth Management Act was passed, it became, uh, uh, I guess, legal for cities to collect impact fees for transportation, parks, and schools, and so on. And so over the years, uh, the city of Federal Way has collected impact fees, but are those impact fees, are they adequate for the growth that we see in our community? I mean, I'm just curious as to what's driving this proposal to um, uh, collect more taxes uh, in a different manner. Uh, that this would be straight across the board from how, what I understand from people that have, are already living here versus new development where it would bring in more residents. Right, thank you. Uh, more one. Um, the impact fee is normally calculated and established by the city council. Um, and the way it gets calculated is based on the project we have on the CIP, the Capital Improvement Plan. The cost of those projects and the implementation of those projects would determine the fee that the city is gonna collect in the future. And as I said, that fee is established by the city council. Um, next year, we're gonna be updating that information and bringing it back to the council for their review and concurrence as what that fee need to be. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, any, anybody else from the uh, member of the public would like to address the council on this issue? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, thank you very much, Diana. Um, Council discussion. Council, I hope we had the chance to uh, ask a couple of questions of staff and also I hear from a, uh, a citizen about uh, about this. Any uh, thoughts, comments? Council Member Honda. So what it says here on the first slide is that the revenue raised should be for specific transportation projects. Is that not? Does that not apply to? It says may be used. Maybe. So we could, it's legal to use it uh, for the police, the hiring of the new police officers? No. Actually, this money will need to be spent. We were just actually talking about that with the day. This will need to be spent on transportation related projects and what we have. But uh, Ade, can you explain that some of this, please? Yes. This particular uh, revenue source will be spent exclusively based on the law on transportation. But currently, we're using some of the general funds, some of the utility tax, to do some of this project. So some of that money will be freed up for non-transportation projects. But this particular fee will be exclusive, according to the law, for transportation projects. So then when, will we have a list of projects at this money will go towards? That is the plan. Okay, thank you. All right, great question. Uh, does I see Council Member Duclo? Yeah, uh, Council Member Honda asked my question. Okay. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. All right, uh, Council, any other? Uh... Okay, Council Member Moore? So uh, as I'm processing this, I, I suspect that um, the fees that are raised out of this can be used on sidewalks, is that correct? Yep, yes. I see where you're going. So that's something I'm just right. going to. Right, the Hoyt Road. The school safety thing, just like what we did on Sacagawea, the school or throughout, well, throughout our city, there were, there's been an emphasis 
in creating safe walking routes uh, for kids. And I think you're thinking about down there by Green Gables exactly. and Hoyt Road and yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I know that's it's on all of our minds. Okay, council, anything else? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Desiree, great job uh, on your presentation. Uh, council, good discussion. Um, so now we will recess to executive session for collective bargaining uh, pursuant to 42 uh, RCW 4230-1404B. Uh, we will be in recess for that purpose.